This morning I'm here with Tony Fortune. Tony and I went to school together. His dad was a coal miner here in town. Uh, RSA man too, wasn't he? Was, he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You got an older brother, Tom. Older brother, yeah. And uh, Tony's been a school teacher all your career, hasn't all he? my career. Yes. yes. And still yeah, doing still it now, doing, doing relieving around relieving. the place. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But what I'm after today is uh, Tony's perspective of the geology around Reefton area here. Uh, we've got slips and mountains and valleys and rivers and all that sort of thing. And I thought, well, Tony will help me put it all together to uh, give a, a, a perspective of how we uh, have this landscape around us here in Reefton now. So, Tony, this all starts way back 200 million years ago when New Zealand was covered in a big ice sheet, wasn't it? it yes, was, yeah. And many times it was covered in an ice sheet, I understand. We've had warm, set, warm spells, ice spells, huge earthquakes, upheavals. Mm. New Zealand's been above the ocean, it's yes. been below the ocean, mm -hmm. and it's on the way up again. Mm -hmm. And um, the landscape has got many um, aspects of ice, glaciation, uh, earthquake activity, flooding activity, yeah. and uh, that's what we're, we're living in today. Yes. So you've galloped all around these hills mm -hmm. here, and you're telling me there about the U-shaped valleys on this side where the yeah. uh, ice came galloping down? It did, uh, especially when you go down the Rahu, or if you see the Rahu area going t from there into Reefton and beyond, you see the U-shaped valleys, and then it goes into an area of um, uh, great big river terraces, and uh, up on the hills there, uh, about five or six hundred feet, mm -hmm. three four hundred metres above Reefton, you get these great big um, river valleys. So when we had the warm spells in between the ice ages, they've carved out huge areas of gravel mm -hmm. uh, right down to um, to the sea, I suppose, mm -hmm. and um, we are living in the remains of that now. Yeah. So you, you just talk about the terraces, there's one up on the lookout, isn't mm -hmm. there? Yeah. Another one just here on the butts, we That's used right. to call it, and yeah. then you come down even lower down to maybe where the Ministry of Works camp was? Yes, and, um, and even the town we're in now, um, there's a river terrace in one half of the town, and then it goes down into another area down where the area school is. Yeah. And, um, and then, you know, it's taken a lot of gravel with it. Yes. Um, and the glaciation seems seems to have pushed all the all the gravel from the uh, Rahu area mm -hmm. right through, and it's um, it's been placed right at the bottom of uh, the Paparoa Ranges. Mm -hmm. And you can see where it peters out somewhere around Giles's Creek. Oh. So it must have been the last glaciation spell that must have um, dumped all that. Um, I, I had a look at Google Earth and you can mm. see it's like a fan going into the Mai Mai Valley, isn't mm. it? Yeah. Mm. Mm. And the Paparoa Range on the other side there is an anomaly too, but uh, I think that's travelling north from somewhere down south. Well, the Paparoa Range, I, was, I did a study of earthquakes and fault lines and all that a few years ago, and it's called a Pluton, mm. and it's sort of like a freestanding mountain or the, the whole range, and all the ranges on the western side of the... Um, of the main fault line, we're moving north and the Canterbury side it's moving towards the east and it's pushing up the southern Alps but yeah. we're we're heading north. Yes. And um, So this has got links to Fiordland too? It's got links to Fiordland or well, the um, geologist that took us for the study he told us that the Paparoa Ranges and so forth started around about Resolution Island way well, down in Fiordland. Yeah. So the fault line has moved up quite a way over the last several million years. Yeah. That's an abrupt landscape down there, isn't it? It is. That's right where the fracture is, yeah. eh? And it c carries on right up through to Murchison yeah. on that main fault line there too, doesn't it? It does, and there are lots of uh, fault lines coming off from the main fault line. They call them splay fault lines, and mm -hmm. uh, we've got in, like our own independent fault lines all over the yes. Reefton and Angahua, Murchison area. Yeah. So 12,800 years ago was when the most recent glacier was galloping through here. Maybe it was just a small one, like mm. petering out stuff. Yeah. But how did that coal get in down and underneath there? Well, as I said before, New Zealand's been up and down, up and down. There's been forests, <laughs> and then there's been a change in climate, and there's been glaciation that's covered the forest areas, and there's been... Um, 
compressed down into the earth and formed coal and uh, and then another more gravel above that and, and it's warmed up and so forth and um, over the years there's several layers of yeah. um, where forests have been. Better quality coal and different layers yeah, too different isn't layers it? Yeah, so, and newly formed coal which yeah. is not so good can, quality. Can they analyse the coal to see what sort of timber it was like removal or metal? Not that I know, no, of, not that no, I know. No. But, there's flakes, isn't there? There's, you know? there's flakes, and there's bits and pieces in the coal mm. of um, of fossils, fossilised yes. leaves, and so forth. Mm. And uh, we all know that up at um, uh, Garvey's Creek, we used to get what we call peacock coal. Right. It has yeah. colours in it, or yeah. rainbow coal, yeah. and uh, in spots they can still find that high quality, mm, high quality, very high quality. Because they use that for. Uh, cast iron stuff, don't yes, they? Yes, yeah. production and so yeah. forth. It's very hot coal. Yeah, and they've got to import it now to do these mm, things because they they're not working on no, that. No. <laughs> what about the coal, uh, the quartz seam that gallops up and down? Well, then they say from around about Collingwood, Nelson, right down through the Lyle, Reefton, mm. down Waiuta Way, um, down as far as Ross, there's a there's an area and uh, there's something like 16 to 20 kilometres wide mm. of grey wacky and particular types of rocks which contain gold mm. and, um, and quartz seams mm. and uh, fortunately Reefton runs right in the middle of that. Yes, yeah. and, uh, Quartzopolis, Quartzopolis, isn't it? Quartzopolis, yeah, it's a nickname for Reefton. Some mm. people say it was the one of the original names but it was never an official name. Right. But um, it was, certainly was rich in gold, and it still is. Yeah, yeah. So we've we've covered the aggregation, but that that big flow of water comes off those big hills. It comes down Lowry's, it comes down the Wainaihu, it comes down the Inangahu, and then when we get to the other side, she starts heading off down to Greymouth, doesn't it? it down to Greymouth, yeah. And the big split of the um, the, two, the saddle. It's a very low saddle, the yes. Inangahu saddle, the <laughs> reef and saddle that we call it. But the true saddle, as we know, is out towards Donkey Creek, mm -hmm. out my Mai, yeah. and it's only very low. Yes, yeah. And the two rivers, um, they just separate there, but there was a time, apparently... That's up that where Birchfields are mining where, now. Where Birchfields are. Apparently yeah. there was, um, they say that the Nangahua would have flowed into the Grey River. Yes. And out that way, but... Mm -hmm. um, it's just so conjecture, I suppose. Conjecture, but uh, you know, we see these terraces, and that's like the evidence of a late bottom, isn't it? Mm, mm. It is, yeah. Like if that bullet gorge was blocked, yeah. the water would hold there, we the would, aggregation would be in mm, underneath there. Mm, we would have been quite a lake, and yeah. probably we were a lake at one stage before the river broke through. Mm. These river gravels, and of course, we've got the um, the the um, the bottom rocks, uh, what do they call it at the very bottom, the the base rocks, um, the big sedimentary stuff. sedimentary stuff on top. Yeah, we've got the papa yes. and, and clay and so forth, and mm. sometimes the sedimentary rock is on top of that papa and clay, and it slides like in the Nangahua earthquake yeah. down at Oweka. Mm -hmm. It um, it slid, slid forward. And even the Reefton saddle, um, the road slid forward yes. because it's sitting on mm. all the gravel. Hence yes, you get that bungle mm. in the road yeah. there. Yeah. But that's old geology out here at Gannon's Bridge up the Waitahu there, isn't it? Very yeah. old stuff in New Zealand wise. It's uh, it's an upthrust or something? It is. Uh, yes, it's all upthrust and uh, around Gannon's and especially Lanky's Creek. It's all Devonian rock and that's some of the oldest rocks in New Zealand mm. and minerals have been gained from that, fossils have been gained from it. Mm. Now I remember there was a little slip, I, was, I, I ran quite a lot up the, um, the Waitahu and up on the terrace mm. above there between Waitahu and uh, Boatman's and this little slip and I saw this rock and it split in half and all these seashells were in it. Right, yeah. And weeks later I went up and those seashells had dissolved. Is that right? So yeah. they can't be exposed to no, the air elements? No, the and they've been covered for probably mm. millions of years. My dad in uh, 64 worked with uh, Alan McEnroe. They built yeah. that uh, bridge out there oh, one yes. winter. Dad yeah. helped out there. Yeah. But Slasher Thomas was there too with his machinery yeah. and they found this 
egg about this big, an old fossilised oh. egg, and the, when they were building the embutments, yeah. that went away to the museums yeah. and was analysed. Oh. And it was definitely an egg of yeah. some sort, yeah. and we'll give it a dinosaur's egg. Yeah. Yeah, we'll give it, it an egg. Yeah. It? <laughs> it was much bigger than a chook's egg, oh, right. but oh. not round like an emu, no. but the no. sizes I remember. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So another thing that uh, intrigued me, as kids we were down here behind Bill Williams is there, we've got those big slips there where yep. the Anangahua River was galloping in under the hill there and eroding away, but have you got any thoughts on that and how that all happened? Well I've seen, well that hillside is, looks like a lateral moraine of a glacier, but it's all gravel. Yes. And um, before 1929 it was very steep at that point where the cliffs are now, mm. they're exposed cliffs, but they were covered in bush and mm. shrub. And the 1929 Murchison earthquake came along, about 7.8 it was, mm. on the scale, and um, created big slips there, and um, those slips have been coming down ever since. Right, so the wound happened during that earthquake, yeah. Mm. yeah. I remember in that in Angahua earthquake, I was laying in bed there, and I heard those hills falling oh, yes. as they came yeah. in, and there was a wave of destruction mm. coming up the valley. Yeah, like a steam train, it wasn't it? It was, and, and yeah. all those hills were falling in, and then... Yeah. When you get out in the morning and daylight, it appears the hills are, are denuded mm. of bush and yes. things, yeah. yeah. And they fell for ages. It they was did. a very dangerous place to play after that. <laughs> well, I know um, even being up there, even now you hear yes. uh, slips coming down, trees coming down. Yeah. Mm. That's a distinctive uh, bit of landscape we've got up there above Giles. It's there called the tablecloth. We refer to it as a kid's a, a, mm. a perfect square there that uh, when the snow's on, it's very distinctive. But you've walked up to there, Tony, I've many times. I've been up there, I've tramped up there, and I've been up there maybe around about a hundred times. Oh, well, you're, yeah. <laughs> you're familiar. And what I've done, the first time I went up there was with Bruce Spence, who oh, was yeah. a, a Presbyterian minister here at the time. Yeah. And um, I took a photo at one, uh, at one spot looking up, mm. and a spot from the top looking down. Mm. And I've done it every few years ever since, right up to now, yes. 2021. And um, some of the vegetation hasn't changed one bit. There's no. still the same tufts yes. of, um, of um, tussock. And at the back, there's a little group of trees and it only goes about one layer back and then it drops off very mm. steeply because it's on the northern side. Mm. And there's a little wee creek going through the top of the tablecloth. A mm. very small creek and yeah. the water is very cold. Yes. And I've stood there and sat there was a particular place I sit and have my crib or my lunch mm. and um, once or twice I've seen deer crossing right. and going to have a drink from the right. creek. So they, they, they're they keeping the vegetation trimmed down do you think? Well not much in these yeah. days, there's not yeah. many deer there but um, you can see a few little signs of deer but not much mm. uh, possums. Lots of whistling frogs there, oh, there's yes. three little ponds and I've camped up there right. a couple of times and one night um, the, the whistling frogs, it, it was louder than reefed them. Yes. Um, they'd all whistle, one at the top pond would whistle, yeah. the, the bottom two ponds would answer, then they'd all go, mm. and then the middle one might whistle and the other two answered, and then I remember about four o'clock in the morning, I just opened one eye, and there was a little slither of um, sun, you know, a beam of sunlight. Mm way in the east there and all of a sudden it all stopped yeah. immediately. That was it. Yeah. That was it. No more. Now the tablecloth, people think that it was um, actually cut out into a square like that but it's a natural thing. Natural thing. Natural yeah. phenomenon. Yeah. A story from Bill Williams of course that Indian Pete lived up I there. I heard about Indian yeah, Pete. So he had a um, a, a team of mules to come to town yeah. and he would uh, get his groceries and go back and we never did see him but no. there was evidence that he did have mules because they found the heel of a boot there you know <laughs> still one there and that was hung up as evidence of him being in recently you but know? I, I remember you telling me at school <laughs> right. about India Beat and Kim Thompson telling me about yeah India so Beat. that's it and it was always we thought it was sort of true. Yes, you that's know. right. It was a bit mystical, wasn't and, it? And yeah. I remember going up there for the first time and wondering where Indian Pete lived. Yeah. But I knew it was a story, but yeah. it was a good story. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's a trail between Kinnersley and Mai Mai over that trail there. there. Is. And yeah. uh, that, that's what Bill said, that's where Indian Pete used yeah. to go backwards and forwards. Yeah. You know, so. yeah. 
Yeah. And a great effect on people. Uh, yeah. No, it was a, a lot of, and that's the, hence we're having that reunion, a bit of a, uh, a catch up again. Mm. Dave Palmer's coming back, Trevor, mm. and uh, on it goes like that. And I saw Dave's mm. palm, a very good palm. Yes, he made it's a, a good, great yeah. effort there. Yeah. Tony, thanks for going over this. I, I just like to understand that geology. Yes, yeah. It's yeah. gone well. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good on you.